Hi and welcome back. In today's tutorial we will talk about data loaders and how we can use them in PyTorch. So what exactly are data loaders? Well, as the name suggests, a data loader is a way to load a dataset into a variable. And until now we worked with fairly simple datasets that we handcrafted, but in the future we will start using more complex datasets and we need a way to work with them. So we will use the data loaders. I have already imported here the necessary libraries. I have imported from Torch Vision, Datasets and Transforms, also Torch and Matplotlib. So we can start by creating a path where we want our dataset to be stored. So I will name this data path and I will set it to be a directory, for example, dot data. And now I will start by downloading the Cipher 10 dataset. So we will have two sets, a training and a validation set. So the first one cipher10 train and I will call datasets.cipher10 and inside of here we will pass in the root directory. So I will pass in data path and I will set the train to be true. So this will tell it that it is a training set and also I will set the download equal to true. Copy and paste it down here and just change from train to true, change it to false. And change here that this is a validation set, like this. Note that this dataset is not the only one that you can use. The dataset's submodule gives us access to the most popular computer vision datasets, such as MNIST, Fashion MNIST, Cipher 100, Coco, and many more. Now we can check out the len of this dataset or how many images we have. So len of CIFAR 10 train and we should get 50,000 images and labels. So we will extract the first image and the first label. So image label from CIFAR 10 train zeroed index. And now we can check out the type of the image and we can see that it is a pill image. We can also access the label, so we can print out the label and we should get a numerical value like 6 and if we check out the Cipher 10 official site we can get these classes. So we have a plane, car, bird, cat and now if we take the, if we print out classes of that label we will see what class it belongs to. So we can see that it is a frog. We can also plot the image using matplotlib, so I will do plt.imshow of the image. And we get this image here. Now this is all very interesting, but if we want to train our neural network, we need to transform our images into tensors. So in order to do this, we will use the transforms that we imported in the beginning. So if we now check out the dir of transforms, we will get a list of functions that we can use on our images. So to transform it to tensors, we will create a variable to tensor and I will call transforms dot to tensor. And now to transform our image into a tensor, I will call it image tensor and I will call the to tensor and pass in here the image. So image. And now if you check out the shape, of this image, we should get a tensor like object. So it's like this 3 times 32 times 32. This was an example on one image, but how do we transform the whole data set? Well, for that, we will create a variable tensor cfr10 and we will call the same cfr10 as we did in the beginning, pass in the data path, we will set train to be true, also download will be false because we already downloaded it. And now to transform it we will call the transform parameter and we will pass in transforms.toTensor. And this will transform all the images into tensors. Now that we transformed our images it is useful to check the data type of the tensor. So we will extract tensor C for 10, extract the zeroth index 0 and we will check out the data type of that pixel. And here we can see that it is a torch float 32. This means that the original pill image was in the range from 0 to 255 with 8 bits per channel. And the transform to, te to tensor turned the data into a 32-bit floating point per channel. 
Moreover, it scaled the pixel values of the image from 0 to 1. So we can check the minimum and the maximum value like this. Image T, that is the tensor image from the beginning, and we will just check out the minimum. And I will do the same for the maximum. And we can see that we get 0 and 1. Now, in order to show the images, we need to permute them. Or we need to permute the axis using the function permute. In that way, the order of axis will change from channel height width to height width channel. So, if we try and show an image, so for example, tensor cipher 10, and we try the 100 image, we get an error that says invalid shape. And then we use the dot permute and change it up so it's the height, width, and then the channel, it will show the image here. One good thing with the transforms is that we can actually chain them and specify whatever we need in order to pre-process our dataset. And this is very important when we start to work with data augmentation, where very good practice is to normalize our dataset. So to work out the normalization, we'll perform the following thing. We will first stack all the images in the dataset, so we will call a variable images and we will call torch.stack and inside of here we will iterate through all the images, so image t, for image t we will discard the label in tensor c for 10 and we will specify dimension to be 3. After all the images are stacked we can now check out the shape, so we will do images.shape and we can see that we have 50,000 images that are stacked. Next, we can also transform the entire dataset with the command .view. So we'll create a temporary, which will be images .view 3 and minus 1. This will keep the three, di three channels and merge all the remaining dimensions into one dimension with appropriate sizes. And we can also print out temporary.shape and we get this. Now we can calculate the mean, so we'll use the command dot mean and it will return three numbers that are mean values for each terminal in a complete dataset. So mean will be temp dot mean dimension one. And also I will extract the standard deviation, so std and here also std. And then if we print out the mean and std, we will get these numbers here. And now, in order to normalize our dataset, we will do the following. So, I will create a variable transformed cfr10 and I will call datasets.cfr10 again and specify all the parameters as before train equals to true, download equals to false. And now, in the transform parameter, I will specify transforms.compose and we will use this like a list. So like a list and inside of this list we will specify all the transformations that we want to apply to this dataset. So we will call transforms.toTensor and also transforms.normalize. And inside of here we will pass in the mean that we calculated above and we will transform it so it's numpy and also std.numpy. And I will just break it here so we can read it better. Like this. And just run it. Now we have a normalized dataset. And we should keep in mind that the normalization has shifted the RGB levels outside the 0 to 1 range. In this way, the overall magnitudes of the channels are changed. So remember, all of the data is still there, however, matplotlib will render it. it as black. So one example would be taking out one image, like for example transformed cipher 10 99. And then we will do plt.im show of that image and we need to permute it. So 1, 2 and 0. And we get an image like this. Now we will start working with data loaders. One thing we need to do before that, we will extract for example two classes we will extract the zeroth and the second class. So to do that, I will create a label map and it will be a dictionary, zero, zero, and two, one. 
and then I will create a temporary CIFAR which will be a list that is image and label map of a label and then we will iterate for image label in transformed CIFAR 10 if a label is in 0 or 2. So this will extract all the labels or all the images that are either class 0 or class 2. Now that we have selected all those images that belong to those classes, we can now create a train loader and we will call the data loader. So torch.utils.data.data loader. And inside of here, we will pass in the temporary cipher that we extracted above. Also, we will specify the batch size. So we want it to be in 64 images in one batch. Also, we will set the shuffle to be true. To see how many batches our train loader created, we can simply just check out the len of train loader. And we should get around 157 batches. And now we can print out images.shape and also labels.shape. And here we can see that we have 64 images in one batch and 64 labels in one batch. And that would be all for this tutorial. If you like this video and you found it helpful, drop a like and subscribe to our channel. I will leave a link down in the description where you can read more about data loaders and how you can use them. Thank you for watching and be safe.